So the five steps to create an effective platform strategy are these. Firstly, we need to understand how platform business models really work. We also need to understand how they're evolving because there's no point in copying or trying to replicate what people did five, 10 years ago. There's an opportunity to, to leap right ahead to the cutting edge of platform strategy. To help us with that, let's learn from the masters who have done this. And then I'm gonna introduce 10 types of platform strategy that you can consider and uh, apply to your business. We do need to constantly keep in mind the need to create an ambidextrous organization. Remember, optimizing the present and inventing the future is critical here. So let's try and understand how platforms work. As we said before, most businesses operate in a very linear way. They create a product, they distribute the product, they try and find customers who hopefully will pay them the right amount and they try and defend their business against competitors. That's the way that 98% of businesses operate today and very successfully. Even if they're software as a service businesses, they operate like this as they do if they're manufacturers of cars. And we introduced this new type of business model. This is the pure play digital platform, which all it does is connect multiple producers with multiple consumers and it tries to I guess, facilitate high value transactions and interactions between the parties. This is the business model these companies operate. And today, roughly maybe 2% of companies operate like this. They tend to be the ones that are growing exponentially if they get this right. Now, the key aspect of the success of a platform business is what economists call network effects. And we said earlier on that these are about making sure you have enough producers and consumers that means that the platform is attractive the more people who use it. Let me bring this to life with an example of Uber. So this diagram here was uh, allegedly drawn on a napkin by one of the venture capitalists who originally invested in Uber. And he was trying to articulate the business model behind the company and how it generates what the, these network effects. And what, what he said was this, is that the more drivers that we can attract to our platform means we have more geographic saturation. So the more geographic saturation we have is that we can guarantee faster pickups. If we can guarantee faster pickups, then more people, more consumers will use the service, and the more consumers who use the service attracts more drivers. So if we can, if we can guarantee that we can pick people up within four minutes, no matter where they are, that's more attractive to consumers, it attracts more drivers, and creates more saturation. Now on top of that, it creates another, another growth flywheel. It means that drivers have less downtime between, between drops. They don't have to wait. That means that overall, the system can lower its prices, which means it creates more demand from consumers. And so we generate these network effects, the growth flywheel it's called. And there are three things that a digital platform needs to do to enable this type of network effect. The first thing it needs to do is design very carefully the system that will attract both parties to the platform. The second thing, it needs to create tools that enable interactions and transactions very efficiently. And finally, it needs to constantly div um, mine and analyze and leverage data to optimize the matching of the right provider of a service to the right consumer of the service and vice versa. Those are the three key things, three key attributes of a successful digital platform. If you get that right, you have the ability to grow exponentially.